My next guest is going to be making his UFC debut at UFC 297, January 20th, in a rematch against Ramon Tavares. It is Siri CD back here on the program. Siri, how are you? I'm great, brother. How are you? I'm doing awesome, but I'm not going to be making my debut in Toronto. It doesn't get much better than this, man. I know you're uh, really stoked to uh, have the debut here uh, at home. Uh, when did you find out and just tell me your excitement level when you got the news confirmed that you would be making your debut at UFC 297? Well, to be honest, man, I found out uh, on week 10 of Contender Series. Like, okay. uh, yeah, I found out when uh, Dana White literally, I was watching it. You know, I was obviously watching Ramon again, seeing how he was going to do. I had a good feeling if he won that uh, there would be, a, especially if he won in a great fashion, that there would be a good chance for a rematch. And uh, yeah, Dana literally announced that he's like first rematch in Contender Series history. You know, Surrey City versus uh, Ramon Tavares in Toronto. He literally said in Toronto. And I was like, amazing. Like, this couldn't have gone any better for me. Yeah. Well, then that, that's great. So plenty of time, plenty of notice. Um, you know, is there, did you like having the debut, like, as, you know, being at home? Or uh, is it one of those things you're going to kind of thrive off of? Or is it one of those things where it's like, man, that's a lot of pressure. Like, how do you look at this? You got to be, you know, looking at this uh, like a big opportunity here. Buddy, I thrive off big moments like this. I'm like, I am so excited to, to like perform in front of my hometown. Like, again, like, I feel like I'm going to use the energy of the crowd, the energy of the arena, and uh, I'm going to use it to my advantage. Again, the, the mental part of this game, the pressure part of this game is something I've been working on for a long time. And I truly believe I'm one of those kind of athletes, one of those kind of people that uh, that shine under the bright lights. And I've proven it time and time again in, in the big moments, you know, with my regional titles as well as the contender series and stuff. Like the last final contender series was the most calm, most relaxed I've ever felt in my life. So these big moments, they just excite me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm so excited to perform. And, and you got to be happy too to put this to bed, right? Because I know I'm sure there was people after the fight saying, "Oh, you know, the ref, the ref." But I mean, you did your job, right? It was the ref that you know kind of stepped in there, right? Bro, it irked me so much reading the comments after. I know I shouldn't be bothered by comments, but man. <laughs> right. So many people like, you know, like, oh, early stoppage, worst stoppage. I'm like, oh, bro, I had it. I could have finished him. God damn it, Rev, why'd you step in so early, you know? But again, like, control the controllables. I wasn't able to control the fact that the ref pulled me off, right? Like, so, you know, I, I, yeah, when, when the rematch came, I just took it as, like, an opportunity. And I was like, awesome, man. Now I can prove everybody, like, everybody that, you know, doubted it, doubted the stoppage and everything. Uh, I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to make sure I finish it concretely, like, completely to the finish this time, yeah. Uh, what's camp look like going into this fight? Is it business as usual? Where are you training? Who are you working with? Uh, what would it, how are things looking going into the fight? Yeah, you know, I'm training with a lot of the same same kind of guys. Um, you know, I have, I have some great southpaws in my camp, so I'm, I'm working with them. I also started, work, I started working with um, a couple pro boxers. You know, southpaws, again, my guy is definitely a specialist in his field. You know, he has great hands, great left hand, great boxing. Um, so, yeah, I've been going out sparring some of the boxers. You know, southpaws throw, love to throw those left hands and getting comfortable with that as well. And uh, yeah, uh, training, training like a madman, man. Like I'm telling you, like, you know, like this, this is it, right? So like, I'm just trying to push it even more than I did last camp. You know, my recovery is on point, working with the right people, with my nutrition, with everything, uh, you know, dialing in my sleep, bro. But this is all I'm doing right now. You know, I, all the other responsibilities in my life are kind of put to the side. And this is my main focus day in, day out. How does that work with the holidays? Uh, Cause I, you said like you're zoning in on the fight. So do you, I'm sure you enjoy a little bit of Christmas, but it's pretty much just, you know, tunnel vision until uh, the 20th. Yeah, man, to be honest, I'm training right through Christmas, right through New Year's, man. Like I have the best team teammates, the best coaches, man. They're coming on, they're coming with me to the gym Christmas day, 11 AM. We're training like it's normal. We're training like it's normal the next day. We're training like it's normal on the 24th. The, the, like that's why I'm so grateful. I have such an amazing team, man, because like, they're like you know it's their christmas too you know they're missing the holidays but they're doing it for me and that means the world to me and uh yeah I i'm training right through it bro like you know I i'll spend an hour or two with my family and stuff but everything else is focused on the fight training partners who've been some of the main guys you've been working with training a lot with uh amin he's five and two right now you know an absolute beast of a southpaw so i've been i've been working with him a lot getting rounds with adam asenza another high level southpaw and then, uh, yeah, the, the typical guys, man, Brad Barrick, Thomas Anderson, all these guys out, out at Aegis MMA here. Uh, yeah, they're, they're my guys. And then, uh, I, a guy named Paul out of, uh, old school boxing in Hamilton. I'm inspiring him a lot too. He's been helping me out. Your corner. What will that look like in the fight? 
Got Lyndon Willock, Paul Jalbert as usual. And then I got my coach, Gavin Hessen, my first coach ever, bro. This guy still nice. works with him. He's my boxing coach, man. He's the first person who believed in me ever. I remember I was like 16 years old, man, in the change room, shy, timid. He walked up to me, man, and he he, he saw the potential in me before I even knew that, that I had that kind of potential in myself. You know, he always believed in me, always saw something in me. And uh, it's crazy that I'm going to be able to make the walk with him because – you know, we've, we've, we've talked about this for, for a decade now, right? And it's finally happening. And uh, I couldn't have, like, a better corner than that. How does the rematch play out on January 20th? Plays out in a finish, man. A spectacular finish. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find my way to this finish again. I just believe, I believe Ramon's a very talented fighter. But I just believe I present much more different skills than him. I, I can finish the fight in a bunch of different ways, a bunch of different finishes, wh- whether it's grappling, submission, ground and pound kicks elbows knees strikes whatever it is man i'm dangerous everywhere so you know um i've made my adjustments from the last fight you know uh i'm not treating me winning that fight as anything i'm completely like it's a blank slate man it's a new opponent it's a new guy it's a new killer you know and and i i'm motivated as ever man like i know how dangerous this dude is and uh i'm taking it seriously how is it getting to share the same card as Sean Strickland? Because uh, that that's like a big boost to this card that that middleweight title fight, especially now with what happened at UFC 296. Yeah, dude. I really feel <laughs> they're trying to blow up that card because that, that was a crazy that was a crazy thing that happened there. But you know, I'm excited, man. Even like sharing sharing the card with um, Mike Malaw, sharing the card with uh, Charles Jordan, a guy I've always looked up to as well, man. You know, I, I met him in Toronto on Media Day a few weeks ago, and I was like damn dude like i'm hanging out with the guys that i've been looking up to you know i'm on that level now and uh i'm excited to share with all these guys man and uh hopefully you know the canadians kill it that night and we go undefeated like you know how it happened in vancouver how was the media day that was obviously announcing the Sportsnet deal and you got to go downtown it looked like a really uh, cool thing and then you're like an officially a ufc fighter like how, how was that whole experience it was surreal buddy it was uh it was really cool man you know like uh i enjoyed every moment of it uh had, had a lot of fun, had a blast meeting all, all these high level guys and, uh, you know, just like getting the cameras on me, you know, and uh, I definitely realized I really like it. So I'm glad yeah. I do. I'm glad I'm not camera shy. You know, I felt really good in there. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a blast. And again, I was just so grateful that the UFC invited me, you know, I not even one fight in the UFC yet. And I'm ready to getting opportunities like this. It definitely means a lot to me. I know, uh, you know, obviously we're not quite at the end of the year yet, but we are looking towards next year and you're going to be starting, you know, as a fighter in the UFC. Do you have any goals for next year? Is that something you've had a chance to kind of reflect on and look ahead for what you want to accomplish, whether it's like, you know, being active or, you know, maybe, uh, you know, I, I don't know, like, do you have any sort of goals set already for next year? Yeah, man, that, that's exactly what it is. Be active. You know, uh, I want to get in at least three fights, be active, but also like, again, man, I just make sure. I'm taking the time and getting better in between my fights too. I, I think I have a, I think there's so much more prog- progress to be made. Um, for um, my right now, my main goal is win my UFC debut in Toronto, and then after that, man, stay active. And then my next big goal will be breaking into the top 15. You know, I'm taking it piece by piece, but my ultimate goal is to become the world champion, and I'm just gonna do micro goals till I get to that moment. You mentioned you're training right through the holidays. Are you doing anything at all? Like you said, a little bit of time for Christmas. Are you doing any dinners or like what, what, what's on the agenda? Or is it just like a regular week for you? It's going to be a regular week for me. You know, on, my, on Christmas day, I'm going to go see my girlfriend's family, hang out for a bit. I'm going to bring my own meal though. You know, like, yeah, 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 prep, dude. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring my meal prep, hang out the family again, man. Like lately I've just like, does especially these last two camps, I've really noticed that like, I can really enjoy my time in camp. You know, I used to like back in the day when it was like four weeks out, three weeks out, I would just get so like fixated about the fight, get a little more moody, get a little agitated, you know, not want to do these things. But I've just been enjoying the process of fight camps and, and you know, working hard and getting better. And uh, and that way it just, you know, it puts me into the moment, makes me really appreciate the, the small amount of family time and like get togethers that I do have with my family and friends. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'm just, uh, I'll, I'll hang out with my, I'll train hard in the morning, train hard in the afternoon and then hang out with the family at night. I think that's gonna be a perfect day. Um, what is downtime looking like right now? Like you mentioned, you're probably hanging out with your girlfriend. Are you getting in any like TV time at all? Or like, what do you do while you're trying to or, like immersed in this fight camp? Yeah, so a few things, you know, I, um, I've been just really dialed in on recovery, man. I have an awesome sponsor. Uh, his name is Daryl, owns a CBD brand and a couple other things. He just hooked me up with a cold plunge and sauna for my house. Oh, so, dude, I'm so jealous. That's dude, awesome. That's bro, so cool. I've been manifesting that for so yeah. long. Like my goal is to have a sauna and a plunge in my backyard. 
and this dude made it happen and now it's like okay i don't have to leave my house no more you know i'm just gonna mm. just do that in the morning do that at night time um yeah man and i'm just reading a lot right now you know uh cory sanagan posted a video on youtube uh five top books for like fight fight camp and stuff like that and one of them was 33 strategies of uh, war by robert green and i'm immersed in that book right now i'm enjoying it a lot so uh yeah dude just reading i i, I watch a little bit of you with my girl not too much uh but mostly just you know like reading stretching going out in nature you know like just taking myself trying to like take my brain off the fight sometimes just being more present but yeah, man, a little bit. So that, that I think that stuff is so important because you do need to, you know, like reset your brain, recharge your brain. So then you're not burnt out mentally, right? You got all your bases covered and it's going to be a great card, man. UFC 297, January 20th. Uh, Siri, thanks so much for doing this. If there's anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media you want to mention, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, they, uh, I just want to thank some of my sponsors, uh, Joe App Support. Uh, he, this guy's been riding with me since uh, day one, to be honest. Uh, Dr. Callum, he's my naturopath. He's been hooking me up as well, you know, helping making sure that my recovery is on point. Daryl um, owns Simply CBD. This guy's the man. He's been really helping me this camp as well. And then just my coaches, Lyndon Willock, Paul Zorber, and Gavin Hessen, man. Uh, I couldn't do it with you, without you guys, so thank you.